So, hi, my name is Shahar Belkin. I'm from a company called Zutacore. And I'm here to update you on what's happening with the coal plate cooling loop requirement committee on the OCP. And actually, this fall past year, we've been working uh, on a B weekly meetings. These are the companies that are involved here. Uh, all of them have some components into the cold plates. And the cold plates eventually is not only the cold plates, it's the wetted material, it's the cooling loop, it's the whole system without the wrecks and without the mechanicals, but that support the cold plates. And one of the first things that we looked at and wanted to add to this requirement is when do you actually move to using liquid cooling? Everybody talked about liquid cooling, but most of the data centers are still cooled by air, but when do you actually move? And this is something that came from ASHRAE, and it gives you a very good picture on when the CPUs start to go over the 300 watts, like we see now from the Genoa, like we see that the Safi Rapid came in 350 watts, then you should start considering, and you can see that still in 300 watts, you can go up to two use servers instead of one use servers and still keep on using air, but you can see that it's coming in and you will need to move to liquid cooling. Now, when we talk about the the reason, and then we can see that the CPUs since the last 10 years have moved to a, from 100 watt to almost 400 watts, and that's the reason that the industry needs to start looking at moving to direct on chip liquid cooling. Now, direct on chip liquid cooling is all the above. The different discussions here from the single phase and two phase immersion to the single phase and two phase cold plate. But this committee is only talking about the coal plates, so we're talking about the single phase and two phase. In the last few years, this committee have done a lot of work with single phase coal plates, and most of the work that was done this year was adding the two phase coal plates into this mix. And when talking about two phase coal plates, we're looking at there's two different technologies. One of them is called pool boiling, that this is what I represent, and the other one is called flow boiling that other companies have provided. And for that's what you see on the blue there is the coal plate that is the pool boiling from Zutacore. Interesting enough is that a lot of things are in common, meaning coal plate is a coal plate. I mean, it looks like a coal plate, it acts like a coal plate, and it is a coal plate, but there is a few differences, and that's what we needed to add into this standard and add it as a complete solution that the customers can select. But the requirements, so this is the loop for the single phase loop that you all know, the water reservoir, a pump, cold liquid, cold water, comes into the cold plates, heats up and comes out to a radiator probably, some kind, and then comes back as cold water. Simple loop that is known and the Two phases is not much different. The, the main difference is that the cold plate is not a cold plate, it's an evaporator. It means liquid comes in, but it has to boil inside and comes up as vapor with the heat. That's the main issue that is different. And then the CDU that used to just cool the liquid from hot liquid to cold liquid actually condense the, liquid, the vapor from vapor back to liquid. That's the difference, except for that there's a reservoir, there's a pump, there's pressure control and testing, but it is very simple in the loop, very similar in the loop, but the functionality, the physics around it is different. And that's what needed to be added. If we're looking at what's in the standard or what's in the, the document, we see that the parameters and the metrics some of them are similar, some of them have a, a, a quite a difference, and I want to only talk about the ones that are different. For example, in cold plates, you have pressure drop. Liquid comes in, there's a pressure drop, liquid comes in. There is no pressure drop in evaporators because liquid comes in and vapor comes out. So the, you cannot measure a pressure drop there. Another one is that in cold plates, you have liquid temperature coming in, liquid temperature going out, in evaporator, it doesn't matter what it comes in because it boils inside. The important part is the boiling temperature, as you can see, or the vape, what temperature are the vapor coming out. And this boiling temperature is actually controlling 
the temperature of the of the chip, the case of the chip. So controlling the boiling temperature is more important than controlling the flow. In standard cold plates, the flow is very important. Here the flow doesn't make any difference. It's only a pool that you have to make sure it's full. So we had quite a lot of time worked on pros and cons for each one of the systems, helping to select the right one for you. So this is something that I think that we spend a lot of time and it worthwhile discussing because the first one everybody knows. I mean, in the electric, if you're using the electric liquid, there is no short circuit, even if it uh, leaks or some way gets to the electronics. Uh, another thing in these dielectric liquids, you do not have corrosion. There's no risk of, uh, diff of biological growth and things like that. But uh, the thermal resistance in this case is not based on the flow like in standard cold plate. So in cold plate, you can increase the flow and get more thermal resistance. Here, the thermal resistance is part of the physics of the liquid itself and the copper that it's made. In cold plate, in water, a little bit, uh, less weight. You can see that the weight uh, of the liquid is higher, but is only about, we're talking 10 liters or two and a half gallons per rec, so that's not a big difference in the a, in a system, but it is higher. And one of the biggest issues that was discussed was the environmental part. Water, water glycol, everybody knows. You can get it from any providers and you don't see the risk in it. And when you're talking about uh, coolants, you're starting to think about global warming, about ozone depletion, about PFAS, and that is a lot to do with the liquids you're using. So today we have different liquids that can be used from global warming potential of 500 to global warming potential of one. And this is a very important component to identify that the provider or the system uses the right liquid. For example, uh, our company were using a year ago the liquid that came from 3M called Novec, Novec 7000, that had a very high global warming potential, not very high, but a high global warming potential of 500. And now we're moving from a different company, from Opteon, that is, has only global warming potential of two. Now came in a, a new regulation coming in for PFAS, so we're working with these providers to provide liquids that are PFAS free, and by 2026, when the regulation will be in, we're expecting to have all the system move to PFAS-3. Different combination of chemicals will get us there. Um, one thing that you need to understand with the electric liquids, and this is probably the reason that we had to develop this evaporator coal plate, is that the dielectric liquid not only do not conduct electricity, they do not conduct heat meaning that you cannot use it like a cold plate that you put cold liquid in, heats up and takes out because it's very bad in carrying heat with it. That is the reason that in order to be useful in a data center in a server, you need to change phase and take the heat with the phase change. This is what the, the electric cold plates is all about and that's why they're called two-phase, not because the two-phase is the important thing, that the electric is the important, but the two-phase is a must. Uh, pressure is also an important thing in designing a system. And if we're talking about pressure, the liquid and water needs to be pressurized and very high flow rate. Just for example, you see the input tube is a very four millimeter tube because there's very limited. It's about 10% of the amount of liquid needs to come into an evaporator cold plate compared to a water-based cold plate. So pressures are low, uh, nylon tubing is enough. and you don't want to have leaks, but you're not afraid if there will ever be a leak because it doesn't do any damage to, the, to anything. So a little bit about these cold plates. As you can see, the small tube of liquid coming in and big tube coming out. This is a big difference in mechanics from the standard water cold plate that are the same size of tubes coming in and out. You have a thin tube coming in with liquid and the vapor that expands is bigger and that's why the tube is different. What you also see there in the picture on the right is what's happening inside. The thing is that this is the only evaporator that is working on a pool boiling. Pool boiling means that that area there is submerged in a pool of liquid and you see the fins coming out of the copper, but between the fins, this is a unique 
and that's the uniqueness of this evaporator. The material between the weak material is a non-thermal conductive, and the boiling actually happens right between those, I would say, paper filter inside because they're saturated with the liquid and the boiling is right there. That makes it very, very efficient and creates an even layer of small bubbles that creates an exact same temperature over all the dye. This is different than the cold plates that you always have, cold plates or single phase air, you always have entry and exit that are different temperatures and different temperatures on the dye. In this case, all the dye, because the heat is moving this way, all the dye is exactly the same temperature on the boiling temperature. And this one thing is a different. The only thing also that you see over there, the white part that you see in the picture, is actually a float. A float that controls the, the flow of liquid coming in because there is no flow. It means that there's flow only to get that pool full all the time, and this is automatically done as an on-demand. So when boiling happens, vapor comes out, level of liquid goes down, the float goes down, and that little orifice that you is marked there with an arrow brings in more liquid in, so each one of these is fully automated and fully on-demand, meaning that you can have different CPUs, different GPUs in the same rack, each one will get the amount of liquid it wants. Some of them can be idle, some of them can be working. You don't need to calculate or to regulate anything because they are self-regulated by the technology itself. Just a few uh, parts of info that added to this uh, new document. So it's low pressure, nylon tubing, there is no uh, limitation of kind of what kind of material will be used because there's no corrosion. You can use aluminum as a manifold. You can use different metallic components. There is no corrosion between them because it's the electric. And that makes a sim the design of, a sim of the system much simpler. Nylon tubing, very simple. Connectors are very simple connectors of push-in. So it is simple to retrofit, it is simple to use and maintain. All the cold plates have to be in parallel. This is different than the serial components that you have, that tubes go from one to another. And the reason is that it comes in liquid, goes out vapor. Vapor cannot be reused for changing phase. So all of them are in parallel. And as I said, in water, you have different temperatures in different parts of the dye. You don't have it here, and there's no pressure drop. Liquid distribution is done by the float, so that's part of the way the add -in to the standard. Other components that have been added were the manifolds. Uh, manifold is a big part of the standard and the distribution inside the rack. So uh, different materials for the different liquids, stainless steel only for the single phase, copper, aluminum, all these are good for, the, uh, for using in two phase because of the dielectric liquid. Material, material compatibility or wetted material compatibility is a big issue in the standard and we can see that the need for uh, corro the problem of corrosion and biological growth carry a lot of weight in the single phase where in the dielectric liquid the ma majority of uh, material compatibility is about the ceilings. All the rubber ceilings inside are being affected and you have to select the right ceilings for the right material and that's what is in the standard as part of it. And quickly, the reason that, uh, well, everybody has that call for action, so I don't want to bore you guys, but the reason is on June, this will be submitted as a full document. So the time is now to add components, and we're looking at all the experts from the pump industries, from the tubing, from the connectors, all of them come together into this standard, and anyone that want to contribute into the discussion, into the document, uh, this committee is very open to have everybody contribute their own uh, technology into it. That's it from my side. Uh, thanks for the presentation. Uh, question about heat reuse and uh, this question related for this uh, nylon tubing. Uh, what is the limits of the vapor temperature in order to achieve high grade heat? What we can achieve? Okay, interesting question, but the, the reason that 
it is very interesting is that we control the boiling temperature, meaning the condenser can control the boiling temperature and the, the condenser controls the pressure of the vapor. So the pressure controls the temperature and you can rise the temperature as much as you want. So you can actually control what will be the case temperature. It's not a matter of flow. It doesn't matter what temperature your air or your uh, flow of liquid from the facility is coming. You control exactly what the boiling temperature is. So you can get the facility water coming out from the condenser as high as 75 degrees and constantly. Meaning it doesn't even change when utilization goes down because the boiling is what controls the temperature and not the facility utilization. And it's very interesting to see that it can come out as constant 75 degrees water going out of the system and that's the max we can do because of the case temperatures, but that's a very good temperature for heat reuse and very efficient. Thank you. It's a good presentation. Yeah, so um, one of the issues might be uh, with, with uh, dielectric fluids, electrostatic buildup. Have you ever seen any of that problem? Not really. Uh, because it's dielectric, you haven't seen anything to, to do with when you're pumping the, the when you're pumping these uh, floral organics, you can get a lateral static buildup, can't you? It's interesting you're talking about pumping because pumping is usually a very big issue for these kind of systems. Yes. The reason is you're pumping liquid that is almost at the boiling point. So when you're pumping it, it is easily create cavitation. So we actually use pumps at up to 20% of their maximum speed. You, 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 we do more pumps or a bigger pump, but use it very, very slowly so you don't get to cavitation. We burned quite a lot of pumps during that process, but mm -hmm. I never stood it to electric st statics or anything like that. It's just a cavitation issue that brought us to uh, break the pumps. <laughs> yeah. And, and what about the, the issue? You said that they were not daisy-chained, that you're all in parallel, you know, because, I mean, you're trading, you're trading, it's the latent heat of the vaporization that uh, you're playing on. So the thing is you can trade the temperature for pressure because as, the, the as, as it turns to vapor, obviously the pressure goes up. But, you're, but could you not put more than one together? Because there's a lot of pipe work that you have to then put into well, the system if you don't uh, put... You're right, but the piping is nylon piping, so you take two of them and connect it to a little T connector or Y connector, so it's not really a big issue of pipes. It's not the pipes that you're using in water in this case. Mm. But the 100% evaporation, meaning the liquid turns completely 100% into vapor, makes it very, very efficient and the ability to use higher temperature of facility water, higher temperature of air, if you're using condensing with air, and the very efficient side of the condensing side, and that's why we do it with 100% evaporation and not the mixture. Because as we said before, this liquid is a very good thermal conductive. If you have liquid coming into the condenser, the, effect, the efficient of the condenser goes down tremendously. So you need to bring it as vapor and turn it into liquid yeah. inside. So what about water then? Water is much better than floral organics. Well, water has its own caveats of, uh, we've seen a lot of systems with their own problems with water, but uh, the maintenance, maintenance of these systems are zero. There is no replacement of liquid for the next 50 years. There, you don't need to replace it. There is no corrosion. There is no erosion. The, the cold plate, after four years of working, is exactly the same thermal resistance that you have in the first day. These are not things that are happening at the moment with water, and that's the reason that we think that for sustainability and for, um, for scalability, water is a big, big issue, and that's the reason that we think the cold plates. Yeah, well, when I was saying water, you know, you obviously run at a subambient pressure, so you, you can get phase change at a, at a low pressure, but I mean, that, that is actually, you can go further with the heat transfer than you can with fluoro organics with water. I mean, it's a fantastic substance, water. Uh, I totally agree that it's a good substance. We all live on that. But it's difficult to work with, yeah. With, yeah. with that, I want you to keep in mind one thing, that once you're going now to the next generation of 1,000 watt in, in a coal plate, you'll need about 2.5 liters per minute for a coal plate mm. to cool that. And that's really a, starting to be a very big issue on the amount of water you need to flow. Thank you very much.